The year was 2019, and the Fortnite player's screens were wide, broad, enlarged, stretched. With every streamer streaming the most bodacious of skins, Epic Games said no. Your thought process right now might be similar to a rejected Sigma male. Don't care, you ugly anyway, but this change impacted every person who touched the game. You see, stretch res, as it was called, allowed for you to lower the horizontal resolution of your game. However, due to the game's coding, that small resolution would be expanded to fit the entire screen. In doing so, it would create a greater field of view, resulting in the player being able to see more than they could on the standard resolution. Field of view in Fortnite is really important. In games like Valorant and Counter-Strike, most of the tracking of opponents is horizontal. There are vertical elements, but it's not as extreme as a game like Fortnite. In Fortnite, tracking your opponents in a fight requires you to follow them in any direction you could possibly imagine. The more narrow your field of view, the more you'll have to turn around to be able to keep track, and the more difficult it becomes. The larger the field of view, the easier it is to keep track. Of course, you know, there's a middle ground, you aren't trying to get a 360 degree camera, but generally, bigger is better. Many fights result in players being in the same box, where it can be easy for players to be blocked by the player's character models. In particular, if you're using a large skin, which you know, I may do, and this leads to the majority of competitive players using the smaller outfit variants to give themselves a better view of players close up, meaning that the majority of male outfits just go unused, and unfortunately that also means the OG resub skin. From the amount of trap kills at the start. <laughs> Holy sh- This is also particularly bad when it comes to a lot of the coolest skins in the game. If I see Darth Vader, I'm just crouching right in front of him. Naturally, the next request for the community was simple, an FOV slider. This would allow you to change the standard 80 FOV up to say 100 or 110, and you could customize what settings are best for you and for your setup. For reference, Valorant's FOV is 103, and it's a first person shooter, whereas Fortnite as a third person is 80. YouTuber Code Life did a video covering what 80, 90, 100, 110, and 120 FOV would look like. Now, 120 FOV looks a little bit trippy as the world starts to get distorted, but in my opinion, somewhere between 90 to 110 has always been the best balance between visibility and staying true to the aesthetic of the game. AKA, you know, the skins ain't too thick. What made this more interesting was the mobile and iPad versions weren't limited to the same FOV. According to one commenter, this was due to Apple's guidelines iPhone apps must also run on iPad without modifications at iPhone resolution. That's why Epic can't force iPad players to use 80 FOV, otherwise they won't be able to keep the game in the App Store. So arguably, the least competitive device has the most competitive FOV settings. The people were not happy. They pleaded. They pleaded some more. Concepts were made on the casual subreddit. Binds were changed. The name of the r slash Fortnite competitive subreddit was changed to FOV slider. FOV slider bot 1 was created. Pulls no delete. It was delete. An in-game poll was requested. Dr. Lupo roasted the FOV while casting. Because the field of view doesn't allow them to see that high and where they want to look down below. Players promised to play Apex Legends instead. And one Redditor was so passionate about feet and shoes, he said that if an FOV slider was added, he'd buy V-Bucks. How can you turn down that offer? It appeared some progress was being made, as on the 25th of April 2019, a comment was made. There is going to be a blog post tomorrow covering various topics such as FOV, Siphon, Game Evolution, etc. It was like Christmas Eve. Everyone was excited. Yeah, we got coal. Fundamentally, we seek to avoid optional settings which provide players with a significant gameplay advantage. There were six reasons given as why Epic Games didn't want to implement an FOV slider into Fortnite. Of course, the community generally focused on one. Motion sickness. They stated that this was to minimize potential motion sickness in players further away from their screens. When players started to open up other games on the Epic Games Store, they saw this note. Increasing this value may help with motion sickness. Oh no. Rocket League, currently owned by Epic Games, states, increasing this may reduce motion sickness. You need a visual example, here's one in Kovacs, where the FOV goes down from 30 all the way up to 140. Not only that, there were some gameplay designs that clearly didn't have motion sickness in mind. But the Fortnite community plays chess, not checkers. Native resolution gives me motion sickness, so can we have an FOV slider? Checkmate. And you know, if you get motion sick at higher FOVs, just, just turn it down. Kind of simple. Not only that, basically every single top level game out there has an FOV slider. Apex Legends, Counter-Strike Source, CSGO, 
Pretty much every Call of Duty game, Halo Infinite, Gears of War, made by Epic Games, Rocket League, currently owned by Epic Games, Cooking Simulator, Crab Game, Crazy Taxi, Colin McRae Rally 2.0, Bugs Bunny 2, Lost in Time from 1999, and even Krunker has an FOV slider. The only two modern games to really not have one on PC is Valorant and, of course, Fortnite. Exposing the strangest Fortnite scam organization is the video on your left, or you can watch the downfall of the Fortnite competitive subreddit on the right.